Hi, I'm Mike. Good morning and welcome along today as we head out to actually fix and rebuild a wire gate here on the ranch. We're going to take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of wire gates. I'm also going to give you some hints and tips to make things just a little bit easier for you. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, stick around. It's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hey there, gang. Welcome back to Our War Having Life, where we're back on the ranch here in Northeast Wyoming, where we like to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Uh, this is the first day in probably, I don't know, four or five days that we've had a temperature that is above zero. Um, so last time I checked the temperature, it was right at uh, right about three or four degrees out here, which is Eh, good enough, but we are taking the pickup out today to work on this gate because I don't really know what the snow drifts look like out there. I don't want to get stuck. Plus, the heater works better in the pickup here, so if we have to take a little break and heat up, uh, we can definitely get that done. We're heading out into the field, and we're actually heading to a gate that leads into our hay yard. Uh, this has been a little bit of a problem over the last couple weeks. This gate has probably been there for oh, I don't even know, 30, 40 years, something like that. So over time, the gate itself has just deteriorated and definitely needs to be replaced. So I've already been out this morning, took, took care of all the chores, fed the cows right up here on the hill to hopefully be able to keep them a little bit away from us. Um, this, like I said, this gate leads into the hay yard, so they like to get in there. In fact, we've had a couple cows that have figured out how to get in, and we've had to chase them out a few times. I've done a few uh, micro repairs, I guess, on this gate, but it is time to go ahead and just get a new one up here and get it replaced. There's a couple other things that are going on with this gate that we are going to have to put on, uh, uh, put on hold for right now just because of the weather. Uh, there's a new post that needs to be put in probably, but we can get this gate back up and hopefully keep the cows out of the hay field. Memories. I would love to be able to leave the pickup running. However, it is a diesel and we'll be able to hear it all the time in the background. So here behind me, this is our hay yard. We've got about 350 bales in here. These bales need to last us through the winter uh, and obviously all the way up until we, uh, we cut hay again next year or this year. So uh, I'm still getting used to the 2024 thing. But this is the gate that's been giving us problems. Now you can see that this gate is pretty haggard. I need that woman again. What I'd give for my baby to just walk in. And not the good kind of Merle Haggard. This is actually uh, having some issues. Luckily, we do have end posts that are still in place here. They actually use some pipe. They drilled through the pipe, which actually works pretty good. And uh, if, if you're gonna put up a, a, a wire gate like this one, this is actually a pretty good idea uh, just to drill right through the post and run the wires through that post if you have any extra pipe laying around. It's easier than doing it on a wood post just because those, uh, those wires will actually slide around. You'll have to staple them in. It kind of gets to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So hopefully this works pretty well to be able to replace this fence. Um, wire gates are very useful on the ranch. First of all, they're a lot cheaper than going out and buying a metal gate. This kind of gate, this is probably, a, I'm going to say a 20 foot gate, probably uh, would run about three or four hundred bucks. So being able to do it in wire obviously makes a huge difference uh, when it comes down to the ranch's finances. These gates are open and closed. Uh, we actually have a gate catcher here. So you lift this up, which I'm not going to do because I actually want to work on this gate in place. And they've got a small loop down at the bottom, which holds this bottom post in. So once we get this done, we'll be able to pull the whole thing out, open it up, get into the hay yard if we need to. This is actually a secondary gate into the hay yard. We can actually come around the other way. But when we have trucks come through and stuff like that, um, it's going to be pushed out. So uh, the other thing that we're looking at is this, this 
existing gate is actually barbed wire. Um, I'm actually going to replace it with smooth wire instead of barbed wire, mostly um, just because it's a lot easier to work with, but also this is not a high pressure area. Um, if this was a place where cows were constantly pushing on it or something like that, I would use barbed wire. Right here, I'm not really too worried about the cows pushing on it. I think the smooth wire uh, will not only be easier for us to work with, but it'll also make things easier uh, to, uh, you know, so the cows don't push through it. So. Um, what we're going to do first is we're actually going to work this wire by wire. And as you can see here, um, this is actually a spot where they broke this down. And I ended up just twisting this back together, really quick fix. Um, but this is actually the tightest wire. This is our top wire. And it is the tightest wire on there. So because I want to do this in place, I'm actually just going to cut the bottom one off. We're going to replace them as we go up. But I do have a few little hints and tips uh, to make this whole thing a little bit easier. So we've got our tools over here in the pickup truck. I've got my fencing caddy, uh, which is actually really handy. If you haven't done this yet, put everything you need for fencing, uh, extra whatever, into, the, into something like this. Even if it's just a bucket, it's going to be a lifesaver for you because you can just grab that and go if you have to do any fencing. Um, I have stuff in here and I make sure that I'm not pulling anything out of this for any other reason rather than just fencing. So this is uh, always set up, always ready to go. This is our smooth wire that we're going to be using. I've got a partial roll, but I think it's going to be plenty. And then we're actually going to take advantage of these. These are actually fence stays and we're going to be putting those on last. So uh, let's get started here uh, by cutting off the bottom wire. Again, I'm gonna to try to leave everything in place. I wanna leave the, the, these posts here. I'm gonna leave the bracing that's there for them, um, but I do need to get this old wire out of the way. And again, this is very rusted old wire that's probably been here for 30 or 40 years. Um, and I do believe that it is time to be replaced. And this is something you have to take a look around every once in a while, replace these wire gates. And there are other places where I'm wanting to put new gates that actually I think wire, wire gates will work really well for. Um, you want to make sure that you save all your little scraps and everything else because you don't want anything getting into the hooves of the cows if they do happen to get over here into this corner. So that's our one half of the bottom wire off. And I'm just going to come over here to the other side and do the exact same thing and cut it off. Once I've got that out of the way and I get myself untangled, there are fence stays in place here. I'm gonna to have to get those out of the way. Kind of a pain in the butt. They're a little bit heavier steel, um, but or wire or whatever they are. Um, but we are gonna get them out of the way as well. And that I can work all the way up. I'm just gonna get them off of all of this stuff here while I'm at it. Obviously when you're working with barbed wire, you wanna have heavy gloves on. That'll make your life easier even if it isn't cold. All this extra wire that we're taking off of here can actually be recycled, which is nice. And uh, I'll probably end up doing that. So we got that bottom strand off and now I can run a new strand for the bottom. Cows aren't even paying attention to what I'm doing. So I could probably take this whole thing down and do it that way. But leaving that top wire, is actually helpful because it's holding tension and keeping these posts upright. So that's the main reason that I'm doing it this way. So got one more to cut off here. There we go. I don't want to be hauling my wire back and forth, so I'm just going to set it at the end or I can tie it in and pull it. And this is where we get into the first little tool that I like to use for this. Um, our first hole is located right here. So I'm just going to put it through this piece of pipe, pull it around, and I've got this twister doohickey that I picked up online that actually works pretty good for this. Um, you just feed your wire through your twister. Once you get it on here, and then you just twist your wire around. Okay, so we've got that attached to this end. Now we're just gonna pull our wire right on down here to the other end. 
Now the wire is gonna be twisted up. You're just gonna wanna pull it as much as you can. Obviously coming off of those spools, especially when it's cold, it's gonna wanna twist on you. Cut off a little bit extra, but that's okay. And grab my twister once again. All right, so we've got our bottom strand up there. As you can see, I did leave a little bit of slack in it. There's a reason I did that, but first, I've got to go through and do the other strands, which you guys know what it looks like. So I'm gonna bust out the rest of these. I think I've got four more to do. And then we'll talk about how to get this thing tightened up. Okay, so there we go. We've got five new strands up, but they are pretty loose. Um, and honestly, this fence doesn't, this gate doesn't look a whole lot better than it did when we even started. But now's where another little trick comes in handy. So we're gonna head on over here to the fencing toolbox. And this is one place I really like to use these. And they're called Jake's wire tighteners. And what we can do is put them on this fence, tighten up that wire a little bit. But one of the nice things is over time, this fence is gonna sag, things could happen. Um, and these things are easy to tighten back up, make just a little bit tighter. And then that way we can just come back out and adjust this gate and not have to restring it. I mean, that's as long as the fence doesn't break itself. So these things are really simple to use. You just slip them. Uh, I gotta remember how to do these because I don't do them all the time. Um, we put our tool on, there we go. We snap our tool onto the Jake's wire tightener. It slips right over the, the wire itself and what we can do is just twist it around and it should only take about one twist you can hear it tightening up and it just hooks right back over itself so that's what it looks like when it's done and it tightens that wire up very very nicely let me show you again one more time this time a little bit more close up all we have to do is just put this over the wire and twist and catch and it's that simple. Just three more left to do really quick. 
And if you've got one that's a little bit more loose, you can actually go for an extra twist as well to try to get them all kind of about the same tension. Like this one, I can tell just gonna need a little bit extra. Now we're looking pretty good. This is actually starting to look like a gate. So one of the tricks with these wire gates is you do not want to get them too tight. Uh, when it comes time to putting them back up, you don't want to have to fight with it. You don't have to want to have to bring out a come along or anything like that. So you have an instinct to make these as tight as possible, but you don't want to. If you do that, you're going to you're going to hate yourself every time you have to open this gate. So not a bad idea to just leave it a little bit loose. But now we have one last step here, and that is what we call wire stays. And that will keep animals from pushing these wires apart. What cows will do is they'll try to stick their heads through. See that grass over there? They're going to want that grass. So they're going to try to stick their heads through here to get to that grass. And that's going to cause all kinds of problems. So that's where the wire stays come, into ha come in handy. And I always like to start my wire stay in the middle, in between two posts, which we have one and two. We're going to talk about those posts in just a second. So these things can be kind of a pain to put on. With new wire, they work pretty well. If you're trying to put them on old wire, they're kind of a pain in the butt. I've seen people lubricate them with like some WD-40 or something like that. Um, that actually works pretty well, but I didn't bring any with me, so I'm not going to be able to do that. You can also sometimes run them down with a drill uh, and be able to get these things on here. But when you're dealing with wire fences or barbed wire or smooth wire these things are really nice to be able to help keep the animals from pushing the wires apart and they just twist right on the other nice thing about them is when you open this gate you don't want your uh, your wires getting tangled up this will actually keep them from tangling up when you lay your gate down after you open it up so we've got two more of those to put on really quick we'll get that done There we go. Now we've got our wire, wire stays on. And as we take a look at this, now you can see when animals come up here and they're trying to stick their heads through, now they can't move that fence anywhere near as far as they could before. That will actually save wear and tear on your wire and on your fence. So with this, uh, this is actually done. This is all you need to do. Um, like I said, I do have a few issues with these posts. Um, it is anchored to posts that don't have an H on them. I think I'm gonna end up having to drill a hole uh, with an auger, put in another post, we'll build an H on each one of these on each end because this one you can really see is leaning in. Um, that's from all the tension on these gates. So um, obviously it works for now, but I am gonna have to put another post here. If I don't wanna do an H, you can actually set a post in concrete, that helps too. So we're gonna open up this gate, make sure it works. We're gonna close it, make sure that works, and then we'll be good. So I really like these gate openers, and you can see I've actually cut a ratchet strap out here because we have had problems with this gate before. Um, now, hopefully those problems are solved. You can see our nice little wraps here uh, that we got done with that little tool. And of course the Jake's wire tighteners are there in case we need to tighten up this fence at all. So to open this gate, all you have to do is lift up on this lever and, wow, there's a little tension there. Uh, the gate did open, took off on us, but the gate opens. But the real trick is to see if we can get it closed. So closing this gate is what is gonna tell us if we've got too much tension on these wires. Um, again, they are new wires, so there is that issue. Uh, they are going to stretch out over time and this is why i really like these closers and openers because you can kind of swing them out and grab your post see i made it a little too tight maybe but it does catch on here so once you've got this over here all you have to do is pull back on this handle it's going to pull the fence tight so there we go We've got a new gate up. The cows aren't gonna be able to push through this. It's easy somewhat to open and close. Over time, it will loosen up a little bit. We'll be able to adjust our Jake's wire tighteners to where they need to be. But in the long run, this is gonna save you hundreds of dollars over having to buy a new gate, especially if it's not somewhere where you're opening and closing it all the time. This is a convenience gate and it's nice to have something you can get open, but at the same time, you wanna have something that's gonna be able to keep cows out 
of your hay yard or wherever you don't want them to be. 350 some bales, that's a lot of money back there. And if the cows get in, they can wreak havoc. So that's it for today. I hope, uh, I hope this comes in handy on your operation or a friend's operation or whoever you decide to share it with. But uh, this is one of the things that I really like doing on the ranch, being able to build this kind of stuff, even though it is like four degrees out here. It's not horrible. Uh, as long as you're working, you're warm. So if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. I can't even talk. Be sure to subscribe. Follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Hit the little bell button so you get the notifications and all that good jazz. And head on over to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter with special deals from the ranch, including beef and pork, on sale right on the website as well. So thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. It's not a bad-looking fence. It'll work. <laughs>